get some maximum protection. You see Peyton staying in there. 101, they have Rod Perry in there in place of Matt Thomas, who's been starting. Ball was perfectly thrown, and you'll see him stride it out. Dance on him, Gene. Dance on him. Sort of a move or not, but they are coming out throwing. He's putting man to man. That's Alan Ellis, number 48 over there with it. Somehow he's got inside. The ball was all over there. Spike that let's use it. So uh, they must have had one more. It was not exactly the same pattern. You'll see him come down and give a little outside move again to Rod Perry. The ball was a little underthrown, but thrown just right. You saw him come back up, make that leap. Perry missed it by a foot. Look at the protection that he had to start this thing all way. Avalini comes back, Bates steps up into his pocket. I don't think he could throw it much further than that. He hung it up there, and again, it was Rod Perry. Pat Thomas tried to get back there and help. And Bob Thomas drills it through, and the Bears have taken the lead. And who would believe it? Bears have roared back. Two 70 yard touchdown pass to play 14 13. Stay on quarterbacks. Watch Kenny Stabler against the Cleveland Browns. Number 64, Joe Jones, roars in. Sack Stabler, Stabler's down, he's shaken. He had to leave the game, but he did come back to lead the undefeated Oakland Raiders 26-10 over the Cleveland Browns. The Kansas City Chiefs, Mike Livingston, learned what the Mountain Boys have known so long that the Denver Broncos have a very tough defense. Out of the pocket, he's faced Mike Livingston, learned what the Mountain Boys have known so long that the Denver Broncos have a very tough defense. Out of the pocket, he's faced by Paul Smith, then hit by Randy Bradishar. Livingston survived that hit, but later was shaken up, bruised left shoulder. However, he should be able to play against Baltimore on Sunday. Just the Houston Oilers. Roll out to the left. He'll be hit by number 15. Dan Pasquarini, number seven, dropping into his own territory, looking frantically for a Houston Oilers receiver. Instead, he finds number 75, Joe Green of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and down he goes, twisting his right leg under Joe Green. Severely sprained right ankle. Dan Pastorini, like Bradshaw, says that he'll be back next week. Before the injury, Dan Pastorini, in the third quarter, with the score tied at 10 apiece, gets good pass protection. Looks far downfield for Billy Johnson, number 84, and the Speedy Johnson has eluded Mel Blount of the Steelers. Runs under the pass to put Houston out in front to stay. The Houston Oilers going on to defeat Pittsburgh 27 to 10. Surprisingly, they lead the Central Division of the American Football Conference. Oh yeah, right ahead is Phillips. Rod Phillips. So what do you think? Right. Ordinarily would look for a rollout, but I don't really expect it this time. He's probably going to get to the outside, I guess. Turn back. And once again, the Rams cannot get into the end zone. I can see it. I like it. See him back there. They've got it pretty well covered. Let's see what Ellis is doing. Yeah, he ran all over him. Well, just a little screen. Just a little bit. The ball was thrown inside. And Blank intercepted it. Got the practice of running it back. And watch this shot on Plank. That's what. Damon. Quickly. And oh, 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 my Intended God. Intended for Harold Jackson, and no one would have caught Livers. No, 
sir. Oh. oh, he had it all out there in front of him. And he'll dream about this one. I think Joe knew from the very beginning that ball's wobbling. Must have slipped a little bit because that one hit him in a tough spot right in the hands. First 32 for the Rams. Fourth holding penalty for the Rams tonight. He's got to up. Wrong one again. Oh, oh my gosh. Into the hands of Doug Plank. Plank says this one I'm going to keep it. Don't anybody push, hold, shove, or nothing. I got me another interception. And Plank gets the Bears out of trouble once again. And this time there are no flags. The Bears have the football. Now they got two seconds in this third quarter. Now the Bears are going to have the win at their back. He had Terry Nelson. You see right there going across. He's got Terry open there for a while, but he's going down deep all the way. And I don't believe he ever took a look in the middle because that plank was right there just playing the middle field. So the Bears once again out of trouble. They'll have a first and 10 when we clip. return at their own 27-yard line. By Rowan Harper. Look at this number 35 is Harper. Look at him turn back on the inside. Good block right there. And look at Corey. 69 out front. And look at Sweetness Food. Corey took out Elmendorf. And 14. We're in the fourth quarter. Peyton gets the call again. Found a little something and squirted for about three. It'll be second down and seven. He's just uncanny. He yeah, he's got really a little is. crease and he can open it up on his own. Rick comes in and plays in the Bob on the left side. Second and eight. Harper gets the try up the middle. Down around the 17 yard line. It'll be third down along four. It's definitely in danger. Third down. Avellini, play action. Out of time. And tried to get it back to Peyton on the screen. Inside screen. And he paid the price. Jones and Brooks back there put a little pressure on it. All right, fourth down. Now keep in mind, earlier when the Rams decided not to go for the field goal, they went on fourth down from about the one-yard line. In comes Bob Thomas. He's four or five on this year. He was 12 of 25 last year. 34-yard attempt. All right. I don't have to tell you the Bears have taken the lead. Bears over the Rams, 17 to 16. We'll be back in just a moment. He's a in the side. And then he's got this feel like he's thrown right there. This is going to be an excellent back if he's not already. Oh, he is. Frank, he is talking about Walter Payton. Let's look again, Don. Well, he did an awful lot of it. He's got some good blocks out here, but watch this. Fryer misses him. Now, here's where he turns it back on. You see uh, Larry Brooks almost gets him number 90. Actually, that's Cody Jones. I missed it a few numbers. Now he's just sitting there watching him go. And that big number 65 was Noah Jackson. He made the block that sprung Walter Payton. First of 10. James Scott. Out of your shot. Bottom of the screen. The other wide receiver. Rams are coming. Look out. Isaiah Robinson blitz. Avalini got away. Hangs it up in the end zone. Oh, holy cow. It is Greg Lotta. Touchdown bear. Oh, boy. Bob Avalini somehow got away from Isaiah Robinson on the blitz. He got away from Jack Youngblood, hung it up, and Greg Lotta, who a writer here in Chicago this past week, said no way to play tight end, has just extended the Bears' lead. All right, let's take another look. The Rams brought everything. There's Isaiah Robinson. He moves to the outside. You see Youngblood coming up, threw it as far as he could. And look at this jump. Right over Monty Jackson. Monty Jackson, 5 foot 11. Avalini paid for it, Don. Let's take the, watch the shot he took. Jack Youngblood lays it on him. The conversion is good. The Bears lead the Rams 24 to 16. Don't go away. Six minutes and eight seconds remaining. Got, doesn't have a lot of 
lot of pressure back there. He's trying to hit over the middle of Charlie Young. Oh, he played a great. Great defensive play is right. That ball was not badly, not ba that badly broke. And he took it away. A simultaneous... <laughs> In the stadium a few minutes ago, now the crowd's kind of gone hushed. Good protection. Peyton, see if this follow through. There's a lot of bears around there, and he threw it the one spot it could be caught, and he caught it right before he went out of the end zone. I'll tell you what he did, Don, what any good receiver has to do. In all that traffic, he concentrated on one thing, the ball. Looked that it right into his hands. Livers was all over him, bothering him, and he looked it right in. 19 seconds, the Rams can't stop it anymore. Peyton, the leading rusher on the night, 135 yards. A great show by the Chicago Bears. Feel like Dick Butt just said, oh, we play well on Monday night, and indeed they did tonight. Starting upset. The Bears over the Rams, 24 to 23. Final seconds pick away, and the fans love it. Joe Namath, leaving the field. Banged around, did not throw the ball well. That took quite a pounding. But he appeared to be all right from that last shot that he took. And uh, knowing this man, I can tell you, no one feels any bad, more badly about it than he does. He has a great deal of pride in what he does. I'm sure that in his own mind, there's a question of whether or not he can still do it. For every pro football player, there comes that time. Once again, the final score. The Chicago Bears 24, the Los Angeles Rams 23. And be sure to be with us 